Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. This video is going to be about how to pour a concrete floor right over the wall. And when I say over the wall, I mean over that concrete wall, that foundation wall right there. Um, now what we do, a lot of times when we show up in the morning, you know, we're responsible put, for putting the poly vapor barrier down. And we don't usually like to do it the day before, a couple days before, in case it rains. We, we want to keep the water off of the poly, that way the the rain water wouldn't get mixed in with the concrete mix so a lot of times we'll just do it the morning we show up so that's a six mil poly vapor barrier we just put down there now what we're using is we're using what we we call that a boot that thing we put on the end of the concrete chute it's called a boot or a tremie and it just helps keep us helps keep the concrete from splattering too bad when we dump it right out of the chute like that and it just gives us a little bit more control over where the concrete goes as it comes down the chute. So we like using that tremie a lot. Um, then you can see over there to the right, we got a concrete chute. We got a 12 foot long concrete chute we'll be using a little bit later in the pour. So make sure you hang around for later in the video when we show you how we use that. This is a pretty typical uh, day for the three of us here. Uh, that's me there shooting the grades. That's Luke there on the right with the dark sweatshirt and Darren on the left. And this is this is our this is my crew right here, and this is pretty much how we pour most of our concrete floors throughout the year with just the three of us. And on a day like today, you know, we're doing the basement floor here, and then there's a garage floor with it that we'll also pour. That's not going to be in this video. I'll have that in another video, but that's a pretty typical day for us to pour a pretty good size house. This is about a 1,700 square foot house. And then, uh, you know, a two bay or a three bay garage along with it. So we're, we're going to be dumping about 20, 21 yards here of concrete. And we're using a, a 3000 PSI mix here with the fiber mesh reinforcement in it. That's a pretty standard mix for our concrete floors here in Maine. Um, and then uh, we pour it about a six inch slump. And a slump is how wet or how dry the concrete is. And... A 1 would be considered really, really dry, and a 10 would be considered really wet. So we like it kind of right in the middle. And I always use what's called this, this water-reducing agent in the concrete mix. So I tell the dispatcher, the guy that loads the concrete truck, I want that in there. And all that water reducer does is a chemical additive, and it allows me to pour the concrete a little bit looser without having to add too much water to it. And that just helps maintain the strength and the integrity of the concrete that way. So as you can see, we, we back the concrete truck up to one spot and we dump out whatever's convenient for us to dump out at that spot. And then from there, once we get that part of the basement filled in, you know, we just set the concrete truck over and we'll, we'll dump out some more concrete. I shot my grades with my laser and I made what was called a wet pad there and then we we struck off with that magnesium screed there that 14 foot magnesium screed we struck off a wet pad and that's what I'm using the vibra screed you know what I'm using the screed off from with this vibra screed uh, we vibra screed a lot of floors and, and then there's some floors where we'll just screed them by hand this one we decided to use the Viber screed because it's pretty wide open, it's nice and flat, and it just made it a little bit easier on today. That Viber screed's got a 14 foot board on it too, so it covers quite a bit of area. Now I'm using a bull float just to smoothen out the surface of the concrete and get it ready for power trialing later on. And I got a 5 foot long bull float on this one. We've got multiple different size bull floats. Today, we that's our biggest one. We, we decided to take out the big one today. So now we got one of our chutes hooked on. We got multiple length chutes. That's a 12-footer. I got a 16-footer. I got another 8-footer. And we usually carry those with us every single day just in case we need it. We have it. And we'll get as much of this concrete truck dumped out as we can so we can get him washed up and get him out of the way and make room for the second truck. Now we got to set him over one more time before we completely empty him out. He's going to do about half of this basement for us. I like to get the concrete truck dumped out as fast as I can too so he can get back and get on another job. 
the dispatcher really likes that. That way, you know, whenever I call him for concrete, he knows I'm going to be fast and he's going to get his truck right back and he doesn't have to wait for it so he can he can take multiple orders and not have to worry about waiting for his trucks to come back. You can see how easy that Tremi works. Hooking that on there, keeping the splatters down, being able to control where the concrete gets dumped on the ground by just holding that boot. Now I'm going around, I'm magging the edges, getting the edges nice and smooth. I'm making my, my wet pads in the middle so we have something to go by in the middle of the floor as Darren and Luke dump out the concrete. This just speeds things up a little bit. And then we like striking our pads in the middle by hand just because we're really fussy. That way we know they're going to be really flat. That's what we call kick screeding right there. We kind of kick our boots and kick our holes that our feet leave with concrete as we screed backwards. And then the vibra screed. You know, you really got to have two two good rakers when you vibra screed. Those guys are the most important. The guy vibra screeding, that thing just floats on the surface. And you just need to give it a little throttle and make sure your ends are both touching. It's the two guys raking that are the really important guys when you're, when you're using a vibra screed. I got a link for a, a vibra screed down in the description. I got a link for all these tools down in the description, guys, if you want to check them out. So we got the first truck dumped out. Now I'm up there back in the second truck in. I don't want to get him too close to that, that brand new foundation. So we like to keep him three or four feet away from it. That way he doesn't crack that foundation. And by using the chute makes it pretty easy. How many of you guys have concrete chutes like that? And, and how many of you guys use them? Let me know down there in the comments. If you guys are new to my channel, you know, this, my name's Mike Day. My channel's all about pouring concrete, whether it's a concrete floor like this, a slab, uh, patios, pool decks, sidewalks. I, I have a lot of videos on stamp concrete, uh, a lot of concrete repair, even some epoxy floor videos. We do a lot of that. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Also, if you get value out of these videos, please hit the like button by you guys, you know, interacting with them, hitting the like button, commenting. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and it helps rank my videos higher so I can reach a lot more people and help a lot more people. And you guys are a big part of that. I appreciate that. So we're in around those pipes. We don't usually use a vibra screed in around pipes like that. We'll use a smaller hand screed. We'll shoot a lot of those wet pads to make sure everything stays nice and flat, nice and level. And we'll keep the vibra screed for the wide open areas. Usually when someone has plumbing in a basement like this, you know, they're going to put a bathroom down there, a sink down there. Um, so they're probably going to finish this basement off. That's what one good thing about having, we call this a daylight basement when it has a, a concrete wall that's ground level like that, a daylight basement or a walkout basement. Um, so you can really finish off the basement and have a, you know, basically a whole second floor that's finished off like, like the first floor. So it doubles the square footage of the house. So that's pretty cool about having a foundation like this. It all depends on just how your land slopes. And uh, I got one myself. I live in a, in a house with a basement like this. So it's pretty cool. Now I'm finishing up the bull float in there. And Darren and Luke are over there dumping on that second truck. Right up where that second truck is up back there. That's where the garage is too that we'll be pouring right after this. I'll be coming out with a video for that next. So... You know, stay tuned for the next video I got coming out, and you'll be able to check that out. We pour a lot of house and garages in a year. I don't know how many we do, we, but we do, you know, well over 100, in between 100 and 200 of these a year, just the three of us. So we, we stay busy pouring concrete. It really helps when the weather's good. You can see me shooting that pad there in the middle. That laser is key to, you know, pouring concrete floors like this. It just... It speeds things up so fast, not having to use a the old-fashioned transit where one pe one person had to look through the transit and the other person had to hold the grade stick. That's what I had to do years and years ago. But lasers are the way to go. If you don't have one, I got one of those down in the description too you could check out. It's well worth the money. It pays for itself for sure. You can see how handy that shoot is. 
it just saves you from uh, pulling a lot of concrete that you don't really need to pull. And it really, you know, in some cases it would help save from getting a pump truck too. So if we couldn't reach this, if we didn't have any of those chutes, this would be very hard to pour just out of the truck. We'd probably have to get a pump truck. I'm checking everything around those pipes, around that plumbing, make sure everything's nice and level. We like our floors to be really, really level. So in the builders that hire us like that too, that's why we have so much work and why they keep hiring us back. If you guys thinking of starting a concrete business like this, I'll have a link down in the description that you can, you know, sign up. Give me your email, sign up, and I'll keep you informed. I'm coming out with a program where I'm going to help you guys. You know, I'm going to mentor you guys. I'm going to coach you guys if you want it, and you can sign up for that. And I'll keep you informed when I'm going to have that done. I'm working on it right now, so go ahead and sign up for that. There's a link down there, and I'll keep you informed when I get that out. So we're finishing this up. This took us just a little over an hour for the three of us to pour this house floor. Um, that's about average for, you know, two full concrete trucks pouring a 1,700 square foot floor. You know, we work, we don't kill ourselves. We work fast, but in steady. I'm sure there's people that are faster and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are slower, but we do all right for the three of us. And we're going to finish screeding that last little section by hand. It was a little narrow for the Vibra screed, so we'll just finish it off using the regular magnesium screed. I'm going to have a video about how we power trial this concrete floor coming out too, guys. And that'll be separate from this one. I didn't want to make this video too long. So just stay tuned for that. Like I said, if you're not subscribed, if you hit the subscribe button and the notification button, that'll let you know when I come out with that one. I've got a bunch of videos about finishing concrete too, so you can check them out in the playlist. I like that big bull float with those long handles. You get to cover a lot of ground with that. You don't have to keep stopping and starting when you're screeding. You can screed a lot of concrete and then go back and bull float it after. So we're getting up there for the garage. I'm going to show you guys right here a little bit of what we do when we start finishing these floors. So you guys check this out. This is pretty cool. I don't know how many of you guys have a crane like this, but let me know down in the comments if you've got a crane like this. But this is key for, you know, if you're going to finish concrete floors and you work in a part of the country that has basements like this, or even, I guess, even slabs, I mean, for just for taking that thing in and out of the truck. I mean, this thing is key. You don't have to pick those up anymore. You just hook onto it with a crane. It's got a wireless remote. You know, we put the winch on top of this this crane. It didn't come with the winch, but you could buy a, a winch for under 100 bucks, a good winch, with a wireless remote. And then you can lower these things right down inside the basement, or you could lower it just right onto a slab, and it'll pick up. This one's a... This is a 30 inch trial. We start floating with this. We have 36 inches. We got 48 inch trials. It'll pick those up. So I just wanted to let you guys know that'll be coming up in the next video. I can tell you where to get that and, and all that. But thanks for watching, guys.